The difference between a robot that scores and a robot that wins is often found in dozens of small, smart design choices that add up in a big way. So basically, when you release the servo and move the chassis motors, the, the PTO couples, and now we have the torque of the chassis motors yep. uh, for our hanging uh, sequence. Seeing these principles in action is one of the fastest ways to improve your own team's approach to any game challenge. And this robot is absolutely packed with them. I'm Coach Pratt, and after more than a decade of teaching robotics, mentoring teams to national championships, and winning Aspire Awards, I can tell you that the design choices made by Team 19234 Byte Force from Romania are some of the more clever that I've seen all season. In this episode of Robots Revealed, we're at the European premiere event for the 2024-25 Into the Deep season. Today, we're going to walk through Byte Force's entire robot. We'll look at their overall strategy and then break down their hardware, specifically their FRC-styled mini box tube on the outtake, they're curiously strung linear slides, but only on one side, and a whole collection of passive improvements that make this robot a serious contender. All right, so tell me about your general strategy for the season. What was your approach? Well, this is our, this is our third robot. We had multiple approaches throughout the season. But this one, for example, is a robot that's specialized for sample collection. Uh, we hit like 17 in Tiliop and we have a 7.0 autonomous, but it also can score specimens pretty reliably because especially in the European uh, Premier Event format, you need to be able to play in any role you're going to be put in by the qualification matches. So, yeah. As far as, far as Ascent goes, um, we have an Ascent Level 3 that my colleagues could uh, tell you more about. Cool. Yeah, let's talk about your intake then. So, uh, let's see that. Well, this is our 8th iteration of intake. We started... The Sorry, your 8th iteration? 8th iteration, yes. yes. Wow, okay. We started with the, claw, uh, the key carton a claw made in a few hours, and it was pretty reliable, but then we tried an active intake. At first, it failed the testing, and we moved on uh, to a claw for the national uh, competition, and then we tried something more complex uh, here with an active intake. It has a roof here to protect uh, the sample from uh, jumping mm -hmm. out of the intake, and a color sensor behind to announce the driver which car uh, he is intaking. Cool. Okay, the outtake. Sure, uh, I'll be talking about the outtake. It is a box tube arm that extends with the help of with this of over center locking mm. linkage, mm -hmm. so that when we score s specimens against the bar, it cannot be closed by any force yeah. pushing against uh -huh. it. So that this way we protect the servo that extends the arm. Besides that, we also have a funnel right here uh, on the back, and which yep. uh, has two brake beam sensors, so that way we can integrate a failsafe during auto, uh, but also so that in teleop, when the arm is here and the specimen comes in, comes into the funnel, the claw automatically closes. How have you found your reliability of your brake beam sensors at this point? Because one of the big challenges with the brake beam sensors is extraneous light coming into that. Yeah. The secret is just uh, multiple iterations. We uh, tried many other iterations before this, and this proved to be one of the most reliable iterations we had along How the way. How far back in this system is the infrared sensor? Is it back on the walls? So you've got quite a large gap, uh, uh, like quite a large bit of shadowed space for it. Yeah, but uh, it proved to be reliable. Okay, good. Uh, we had to enlarge the holes. Yeah. Yeah, the, I can totally understand. The closed is uh, why yep. the external light that you mentioned doesn't mm -hmm. come. Now, can you flip the intake back over? Uh, sorry, it's not the intake. My mistake. The outtake. Now, you used a, a box tube design on this. You've got a little passive spring that helps it to kind of counterbalance it back around. Why do you choose a box tube here as opposed to something like a linear slide? Well, uh, we, we really wanted to extend our outtake arm. And we uh, the other variant would have been a rail and yep. the rail is not so uh, not as uh, resistant as this aluminum box tube yep. and we had we had a design in mind which really proved to be very consistent and the the box tube uh, really does its job if you ask it's a great piece and you've catted that yourself i'm assuming yeah we catted that ourselves cool. in fusion mm -hmm. very cool i'm always a big fan of fusion 
So yeah, yes. yeah. they love All to right. see it. What are you using for your hang then? Are you guys level two? Are you level three ascent? We, our robot uh, has a level three ascent. So for the hanging part, you can see our hooks right here. Two of them are passive, which are directly attached to the chassis. Hmm. And two which go hand in hand with the sliders. Yep. So in order to use our fast vertical slides, both for scoring and for hanging, we needed much more torque. So we implemented a, simple, a very simple PTO mechanism. So you can see two gears directly attached to the chassis motors and one which is connected to the lift transmission. Mm. So basically, mm. when you release the servo and move the chassis motors, the, the PTO couples, and now we have the torque of the chassis motors Yep. Uh, for our hanging uh, sequence. So that's you this little guy here, right? Yeah. yeah. You can, oh, you you can also little... see a physical prototype for better understanding. Great. Yeah. So it's got like this and when motors... Uh, oh, okay. It, 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 it's, it's so it's, okay. it's on an X-axis yeah, then. So this is exactly. the part yeah. that springs out. Yeah, you cannot it's really a, It's an expansion see. spring. So, very uh, cool. Very clever. A, clever. a worrying aspect which yep. uh, uh, we uh, counter... Uh, which we... Finished. Yeah, uh, so uh, what if the gears won't mesh properly? Yes. Like, like in this position. Yeah, because you've got yeah. three gears um, trying to mesh on. Our, our sequence of, uh, of the hanging, I can't really get it, I'll try. Yeah, uh, I understand for, what you for, mean. For, for, for yeah, well, basically we spin the motors and the gear comes back in place. Great, beautiful. So with two of these, we have the combined yeah. torque of six motors. Yeah. And your drive motors are these four thirty fives. Yes. Okay. E exactly. And your linear slides then are they running eleven fifties? Um. Uh, uh, their, uh, their output are uh, their output is uh one thousand and eighty RPM okay. with a thirty two millimeter spool. Okay. Okay. So you've you've made some custom spools that you can get a little higher RPM. Yeah. Than that. Okay. Exactly. The friction from the PTO. So yeah. yeah it's not going to be yeah, not going to be perfect, but it is that kind of idea. Okay. For counter for counteracting the friction, we yep. used a bearing on our re on our servo release, and that re and that really okay. alleviated the friction. Yeah. Ah, yes, yeah. I see that in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough little guy to, to catch right in there. It slides right on this but, plastic cover that we implemented because the gear surface has holes and is not perfectly yes. flat. Now your plastic cover, is it PLA? Is it a is it, 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 is, it is PLA. It's PLA. Plain okay. PLA. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. And you're using a belted drivetrain. Is this just a one-to-one -one on your drivetrain? Yeah, a one-to-one, 435. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. So what is... What are you proud of about this robot? What's What are you, what are you happiest with about its design? Well, another uh, great achievement is our consistency. Mm. Uh, on mm -hmm. the software side, we added, we made a lot of changes to help us develop a reliable autonomous. Yeah. Uh, for example, we have a lot of fail safes. Like our robot can adapt to any uh, condition changes. Yeah. And uh, for detection, we're using the limelight uh, together with the TensorFlow light pipeline. At the nationals, we had an OpenCV one, but we had problems with uh, samples being too close to each other. So we move to TensorFlow Lite. Mm -hmm. All this data goes to a complex algorithm that uses DLNA triangulation and barycentric interpolation to calculate the delta heading and yep. the delta extendo for picking up any sample. Another cool trick is used for optimizing all these intensive uh, calculations is pre-computing all the values and storing them in a hash map. So that we end up with a really fast detection. Ah. For fail safes, we use the sensors presented my, by my colleagues to mm. to have, for example, a human player fail saves yep. that prevents human error. So if, let's say that the robot tries picking it up and uh, goes to score the the, the specimen, uh, if uh, the brain realizes that something went wrong, it can return uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. And also we have uh, transfer fail saves. All the, the robots that have active intakes tend to, from time to time, to have little problems with transfers. And uh, we decided to implement uh, this first if using the color sensor to make a more reliable autonomous. And also we uh, developed pickup first if that ensures that we're not, let's say, going away with the wrong color or going away, away without uh, picking up any samples. Very cool. Now, you have these lights on the side. 
Yes. This is for your driver to let them know what color yes. sample uh, they yes. picked and up. Yes, also they were really helpful in debugging the limelight detection. Awesome. Yeah, we so can, you know uh, where things yes. are. I, I'm a big, I'm a bit of a gorilla myself, an ape. So I like having bright lights so I know yes. when the things visual are working, helps. right? For example, if yeah. uh, at the init our camera is not connected, the lights will uh, blink red. I love fail safes. It's like the beeps on a computer, right? Yes. Error decode, you know something's wrong right away. Because when you're stressed in the competition, you're not thinking about yes. the, all of these problems. Like now, they could have uh, missed the telemetry message. Yes. And a question have... I'm curious about yes. is you have, this side is not strong, but it's clearly set up to be. This side is strong. This side's strong as well in your horizontal. This side is not strong. What's your purpose for only, is that an intentional thing? Is that a, oh, this didn't work and now it's good enough? Uh, yeah, well, it was a trial and error thing. Okay, we, yeah. as, as, uh, as you can see, for the lift, we have, we intended to have string on both sides, yep. but we simply found out that they are way more efficient only on one side. And it also worked for the hanging part. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, we found out last season in power play, uh, in, sorry, in center stage, that for the um, horizontal extension, yep. a w one side string is way more, e is also way more efficient. Okay. Now, we say in terms of efficiency, you just need less motors to be able to drive it, just less torque overall, and you just have one as a, as a passive support structure? Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time to share about your robot, guys. This is super cool and some really, really impressive, compact engineering going on. Thanks.